Hi y'all, Vince Horn here, sitting at home and wanted to share a little bit of a spring update on how things are going with the Buddhist Geeks farm. And right now, as you may already know, um, the Buddhist Geeks farm is really um, a project which um, is still in kind of early development phase. And at this point, mostly what we're doing is working on sharing the vision, um, prototyping, uh, here at home and elsewhere, and um, working toward purchasing a plot of land where we can build a small retreat center and small farm um, to feed the people that are on retreat and maybe uh, if we can get it going, uh, share with others. So I uh, just wanted to give a brief update now that it's uh, turning towards spring. And as it does, uh, we're looking at um, sort of starting to grow and starting to do some early things. This is our second season um, um, growing, and so we're very much noobs when it comes to this, but uh, also very uh, motivated to learn. So, um, yeah, let me tell you what I've been up to. Uh, as, as the weather's gotten nicer, I've started to look at the schedule, the planting schedule here in Western North Carolina, and um, have started to actually... Um, plant some uh, seedlings outside, um, planted some spinach recently, and also uh, worked this weekend on planting a number of cell trays uh, so that we could transplant the seedlings uh, outside uh, when the weather turns a little nicer. And so I'm working on a number of uh, crops here. I'll show you what we've got. So um, here, we have our salad mix. This is a 200 cell tray salad mix and red lettuce. And all of this is uh, a couple seeds per tray. Um, this is sitting under the LED light. And then also just below, I've got some collards on the left there. And then on the right, we have kale. Um, so you can see as well here, we've got a bunch of seeds planted. And on the bottom here, I've got one tray of microgreens growing. And um, we'll see how those turn out. The last couple of microgreens we've done have not turned out particularly well. Uh, looks like they're probably overwatered. So we're working on that. And then uh, let me bring you outside here and show you kind of our bottom planting area. We've still got some work to do here. Um, but pretty soon we're going to be out here and we're going to be planting right in this little area here. It gets really good sun and we've been watching the patterns of sunlight over the last uh, almost year and it seems like this is a really good spot for us to plant. And then I'll show you our upper planting area as well so you can kind of get a sense for what we're working on. Hopefully I won't step on any glass given that I dropped a huge um, mason jar yesterday while I was working on this and glass shattered everywhere. That'd be pretty funny to record that, <laughs> screaming. Um, yeah, so coming up here and here I'll show you the um, spinach. And this is our other kind of main planting space where we're gonna have uh, hopefully a number of things growing and uh, let me show you here yeah this also gets some pretty good sunlight so yeah we'll be working on that and then what else well I'd say the other major update to share is we have been over the winter starting to look at properties at land and we've seen a couple things. We've actually gone out and physically looked at a couple places. And our plan is to continue to do that uh, while we refine and simplify the vision of the Buddhist Geeks Farm. So our initial stab at that vision was quite, I would say, large scale, maybe a little grandiose, <laughs> as is my style. And um, we've since, after going out and looking at things and starting to get a sense for the market and for the um, budgeting and all of that stuff, we started to kind of scale down the vision a little bit so that it's something that's doable 
and, and, and importantly, something that's replicatable. I mean, this vision for us, it, it needs to be a replicatable vision or one that other people, if they want to take and do in other ways, can do. Um, so so there's, that's the larger societal goal of, of creating a, a kind of model that actually is workable and doable. And so what we're looking at right now is we're looking at land in the western North Carolina area um, within a sort of 30 or so minute radius, driving radius of downtown Asheville. And um, we are looking for two plus acres and we're looking for a spot that has some cleared area so that we could very quickly get up and running with some growing some food growing and also space to build two structures and the first structure would be a practice yurt a practice space a circular yurt that could hold um, 30 plus people so a large, uh, large practice space. And the other space would be a large dormitory space. Uh, and this would be where uh, the retreatants would be housed. This would be able to hold 10 people. And we right now are looking at the blueprints from open source ecology and the dormitory that they've built using um, their open source hardware brick press, the Liberator. Uh, which they've already built on their farms in on their farm in fact the in Kansas factory farm and we're we're looking at them as a potential partner uh, someone who we could partner with to uh, build a low-cost eco uh, open source uh, dormitory and this would include a kitchen a space to eat and space to live and then you'd have the practice space and then space outside for growing and working so this is a very simple vision uh, our best estimate is that we could do all of this for under half a million dollars and that we could do it in such a way where at the end we don't really have any significant debt. Um, so this would be something that could be running uh, quite low cost and um, could be operational even um, during swings in financial markets. So this is, um, again, we're aiming for sustainability. We're aiming to create a place where people can come and practice for either short periods, as little as a week, or long periods, potentially years at a time, such that um, we're able to continue to create a space of deep contemplative practice, even in the midst of times of deep uncertainty, so that this project is both a contribution in its intention to increasing um, the, the, the sustainability of the human species, <laughs> uh, and also at the same time is a uh, sort of neo-monastic uh, space and an area for people who really want to dedicate themselves to practice um, and who don't really see these two aims as having to be so different the, the separation between contemplation and action why do these need to be different why do these need to be separate here's a little <laughs> view of her where we live this is where I do my contemplative action not the most sustainable of cars <laughs> but you know what you need a four-wheel drive to get up that dirt road <laughs> and uh, the cyber truck is not here yet so anyway this is a little bit of an update on where we are with the buddhist geeks farm in the spring we're planting we're revisioning we're really looking to head into summer with a clear vision and we're going to be uh, as we get this clarified reaching out to our potential donors as i've said we already have one donor who has money behind this project, uh, we're looking to raise, I think, around a hundred grand in order to purchase the type of land that we need that meets the parameters I mentioned earlier. And uh, we're looking forward to, to taking that first big step um, toward making this Buddhist Geeks Farm and Retreat Center, um, this vision, a reality. And I hope you will continue to uh, stay in touch with us. And if you have any ideas, any resources that you can contribute, um, please don't hesitate to reach out um, to join the Buddhist Geeks Farm mailing list, uh, to go to BuddhistGeeks.farm. And um, yeah, let's stay in touch. And thank you so much for taking the time.